there is an interesting thing happening in the Elite Dangerous Markets right now. So, uh, check this out. Engineered SQL Missile Rack. This is the Liz Rider Missile Rack that was offered a while back. Um, most of the Blueprints bog standard stuff. And most of the human tech broker uh, blueprints have historically uh, required at least one commodity in order to be purchasable. But those commodities have been readily available somewhere in the bubble. Occasionally they were rarer and you needed to go to a specific place to buy them, but they were doable. Although very inconvenient because you usually had to fly a cargo fitted ship with some substantial jump range to make everything work. So uh, a lot of people were willing to go through the effort. I was one of them. I've unlocked basically every blueprint that's available from the human broker except for uh, the Thargoid bobblehead, which I could probably knock out here sometime soon. And, uh, and this guy I actually just barely bought. Now, I thought that this missile rack would unlock the way that everything else does. Because, like, if I go in and, and unlock the interceptor bobblehead, uh, this disappears from the unlockable items, and you just always have access to it. And the same thing with all the other blueprints. But this guy works different. I already bought one. It's in my storage. And it reappeared on my list. And I thought it was a bug, because I was expecting to have to go into the uh, station store and then buy the special module. But that's not what happened. Uh, what it did was go into my outfitting storage. If I go into stored modules right here, there it is. And it's uh, it's pretty nice. If you're if you're thinking about having seeker missiles on your ship and you don't want pack hounds, this is pretty cool. Although if I had to pick between this and pack hounds for a lot of applications, I'd probably still take the pack hound. But if you you know, if you're feeling this, definitely go for it. I went for it because I just wanted to have one, and I'll probably play with it here soon because I've got that uh, the pure cancer type pen that's all missile racks. Although, I would be curious about editing the uh, experimental effect, see if I can do that without messing any of this up. I don't think that'll be an issue, um, but I would I would uh, set it up and then change this to um, the thermal damage experimental, which name currently escapes my memory. Anyway. Um, there's a lot of, of messing around that you can do with this, and I'm uh, I'm interested to see how that works out. But I'll get to that later. Um, for now, let's see. Let me get out of here and get back to this blueprint, because the real story isn't the missile rack, if you can believe it. The real story is the osmium in the Seeker missile blueprint. All the blueprints have required commodities in the past. This is the first time that I've seen a blueprint require a mineable. Meaning that you can't buy osmium at an NPC commodity market anywhere. It's not available. You have to go out, and before fleet carriers especially, you would have to go out and scrape this off a rock somewhere and it would take hours. Very inconvenient. But we've got fleet carriers, and they are responding. These fleet carriers are buying osmium at this price. Meaning that if you have osmium in your ship, you can go, and this guy will pay flipping top dollar for it. That's that's incredible. 451 800 These five fleet carriers right now are the big dealers in it. Um, but that's just on the buy side. There are These are carriers that are currently selling it, and the prices are... Pretty flippin' steep, 451 800 They're basically uh, buying at the max cap. They're essentially acting as aggregation points. Um, so if you see a buy and a sell for this price, it means the fleet carrier owner is not really trying to make a lot of money, although Terrace terrorist might skim a little off the top there, maybe? No, I can't remember. Uh, leave it in the comments if you feel like it. Actually, no. Um, <clears throat> I don't think tariffs apply to the commodities market because you can just charge direct prices. Um, let's see. Prices fall off a cliff from there. Supply is highly variable, but you'll note that some of these are like they're running low. Um, this is really cool because it means now that the there is because of this one blueprint, there is now demand for a mineable only that can only be filled by fleet carriers, which means that I now have a reason not to filter them out when I'm doing commodity searches, which I've been known to do because there's a lot of fleet carriers and it's kind of difficult to sift through that kind of information. Uh, this is a big deal. I, and I think FDEV know exactly what they're doing here because uh, there are other modules that are double engineered like this that could easily be tossed in here and I really, really want them to. Uh, because it will cost them zero dev time and it will mean that people who weren't playing that week or who weren't aware that the 
uh, community goal that week was offering a module reward can now go in and with some effort on their side acquire some of these difficult to acquire modules. Uh, I personally missed out on the extended range point defense and the extra long range frame shift drive which bums me out because now it means that the crate phantom with that frame shift drive can hit ranges comparable to an anaconda without too much effort and it's flipping cool. Uh, but on the commander side of things, I'm not just here to like swoon over something that FDev did that I like. Um, all I have a, an inkling suspicion that all of these modules are going to become available soon through the technology broker, and that they're all going to have some type of, um, or at least most of them will, require some type of mineable, something that a commander has to physically go out and get. And that by doing that, there are going to be other commodities in here that you can go in and that you'll have to get from fleet carriers. So it's an opportunity for fleet carriers to be generating revenue organically. Now, it's a step in the right direction, but there's still a lot more room to go. Um, if you happen to have osmium or you like to mine, uh, th there's an opportunity to fill some supply here, although not all that much. I mean, if you added all these together, you might get to 1,000. I'm not going to break out a calculator and do that right now because it's boring, and I want to keep this video on the shorter side. Uh, but a commander who is committed to the task could probably mine all of this out of a system with osmium, especially with a hot spot in a couple of hours. But there's a lot of money to be made there. I mean, um, I bought seven tons at this price, and it was about three million. So if you extrapolate that out, I mean, uh, or I'll do even one better. This is the most you can get. Uh, let's see. This is the most you can get selling osmium to a station in the or selling painite to a station in the bubble. And this is the most you can get selling low temperature diamonds to a station in the bubble. They're both, you know, roughly at the three fifties. And these fleet carriers, we'll go back over here, are taking the four fifties, making this probably one of the most profitable things to mine right now. And and not because of the BGS, it's because of this commander driven market. It's because of this. And this is going to get more expensive. This price is steeply discounted because of the recent completion of the, the community goal that made this available. Um, I, I don't know what the final end price is, but um, it's going to create more demand on this side. So if you happen to have a fleet carrier, you've got two ways that you can make money here. You can either mine osmium yourself and bank it in your carrier, and then just watch Inara to see if these prices come back up. And when you notice that there's a lot of supply, like these carriers are starting to run low on it, um, and these carriers are currently trying to buy it with mm, workable buy orders um, that you can basically fill these orders and make a ton of money doing so which is flipping cool I love it I love it to death but also if you happen to have osmium you could just be selling it on your fleet carriers you jump it around and and people will probably fly to it especially if you're near a human tech broker but to really make a lot of money with this, you probably have to plan on parking your carrier as close to a human tech broker as you can, you know, up to a point. Although, I mean, these four ships are filling a lot of the demand, right? Five ships, actually, are filling a lot of the demand pretty effectively. So, I don't know if it, this is definitely isn't a gold rush. This is a situational opportunity that you can choose to take advantage of. And it's a good one. Um, definitely be watching this, especially as more blueprints pop up in here, because whatever the, if they're, if they do what I think they're going to do, and there's other mineables that are going to be required here, you're going to see comparable sp uh, spikes in demand as other commanders uh, who are trying to avoid the time sink that mining requires start looking for fleet carriers so they can go and fill these orders. Again, I want to, I want to re remind everybody that this is a one-off. When you click this module, you don't get a permanent right to buy. You get one instance of the module deposited directly to your storage. So that's constant recurrent demand and it's going to be a, a it's going to be a big deal going forward i do however think that the in-game tools for finding fleet carriers so equipped are bad we can get into that later um, but be familiar with anara be familiar with eddb understand how these tools work and then be familiar with the types of materials that are mineable only because i think we're going to see a lot more stuff on this list uh, start to become a thing where you have to go and get it so uh, that's all I got for today. Uh, I'll catch you guys later.